Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show. Just before the show, we were discussing the importance of education and some of uh, the differences in basically how there's people who do not have knowledge but still very successful, and how people who have actually gain knowledge and have actually gone to a point where they have become successful. The next point which we want to follow on from this is credentials. Now whether getting a credential was important or whether having no experience in gaining uh, such a good career is seen as good. And I think um, Molana mentioned that no matter how many bachelors or degrees you have, you must always remain humble. And sometimes we find that someone with a master's or PhD or a doctor can sometimes may lose that humbleness which they have. <laughs> How do we make sure that we maintain as a person with good akhlaq with when we're seeking knowledge and when we've, when we've reached a stage, as Mulana mentioned, for example, a marja and how they've, they have, they're so knowledge regardless of the position that they're in today. So I'd like to take it back onto Malana um, to mention this uh, <coughs> topic of credentials. <coughs> I mean, if you if you look at this particular point, it's a very important point that you know we get educated or we get degrees and then we uh, lose that humility or we become arrogant. But regarding this, I think there's a I remember reading a saying um, a while ago, and um, it really struck me as something that we should all reflect on and the saying was that if you're the best person mm -hmm. in a room yeah then you're in the wrong room <laughs> okay so that and I, I reflected on that and I thought that that's a very good point why because if I'm the best person in the room then that means I'm gonna be, be arrogant right because I know that I know more than these people I am better than these people in terms of intellectual capability, so on and so forth. Whereas, if I consistently try to be with those people who are better than me, absolutely, then I will, number one, I, it will better me, right? Because if I'm with those people who are, um, who are intellectually less uh -huh. capable than uh -huh. me, then I will not be able to intellectually progress yes they will be they will benefit from me but i can't benefit from them and <coughs> if and it will allow me to become arrogant it will allow me to or it will you know shaitan will be there to show to whisper and say look that means you're better than all of them whereas if i'm consistently with those people who are better than me mm -hmm. who are superior to me then i will uh, number one i will stay humble because I know all these people in the room here, they're all better than me. They're all superior to me. They are more knowledgeable than me. And number two, <coughs> it will help me to intellectually progress and develop. Why? Because if I'm sitting with people who are intellectually superior to me, then oh, they're more knowledgeable than me, then definitely they're going to say something that I didn't know. Absolutely. And I'm going to find out. I'm going to learn more uh, due to being in their presence. Right? That's why there is a. We have narrations, for example, the Ayyam uh, alayhi salam say that you should sit with the ulama, you should sit with the scholars. Uh, one hour of sitting with the scholars is better than 70 years of doing mustahab ibadat, for example. One hour of seeking knowledge, one hour of reflecting on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than, uh, you know, countless years of ibadat, so on and so forth. And. Also, what, what we're doing is that it, it's going to improve the quality of my life and the quality of my abadis as well. If I am sitting with those people who know better than me, who are more knowledgeable than me. So this will allow me to stay humble. And this is very important, okay? Because it's very easy to be arrogant, but it's very difficult to be humble. Right? Yeah. It's very easy to be arrogant, Absolutely. but the consequences of being arrogant are very uh, dangerous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran tells us right at the beginning of the Quran that we made Adam more knowledgeable. 
angels recognize this, they did the sajda. Mm. Iblis did not abaw wa stakbar wa kana min al-kafirin. He disobeyed, he was arrogant, and he was from the disbelievers. Why? Just because he refused to acknowledge and he became arrogant. So it's easy to become arrogant. Why? Because the moment that I think in my mind that I'm better than that person in front of me, that's it. But in reality, I have to uh, realize that no, I'm not better than him. I'm not better than that person, but I'm work in progress. Absolutely. And that is very important to I think, reflect on. Absolutely. I think taking this away from the religious aspect of it, <coughs> what um, we find, I think one of my lecturers used to say is, we should always, whenever entering a lecture, sit with different people. Um, it's a similar point you've mentioned, and because they, what they find is five years, for five, six years uh, go by and they see that person again, they only imagine that person with the person they sat next to. They sat next to. What that does is limit the amount of knowledge you've actually gained during your four to three years at university. However, what you should be doing, sitting with people you're not comfortable with, sitting with people, going to make, um, cafeterias which are different to what you usually go to, she even said, go to toilets which are different. You may find someone interesting. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but um, the whole um, purpose of my what I've mentioned is that by sitting with people who you are normally not comfortable with and who may think different to you, who may also be of a different uh, gender, caste, etc. Just gaining their knowledge, gaining their opinion. What that what that does is open up more avenues, opens your mind up, and in future, you ha you're not constricted to just the friends, and you basically explore further and develop on your um, networking. Okay, so the next point. Um, we may find that attaining knowledge later on um, in life, we become very opinionated. And what this does is, how do we stop this? It's similar to the humble topic we discussed, but I think um, when you become, for example, a doctor, <coughs> PhD, you've written, there is only one way. <laughs> uh, there's no other way um, because of the amount of um, studying you have done in that topic. However, I think um, looking at uh, knowledge and the more we gain it, how do we stay away from basically becoming too opinionated about things? I think it's very important to, to remember that, yes, um, I've studied something. I uh, Perhaps this is my area. I know a lot about it. But at the, same, at the same time, I'm not the only person who studied this area. Okay? Definitely, I'm not the only person. Even if, this, if I've done research into a particularly specialized topic, there's definitely people before me who have also researched in this area. Mm -hmm. okay? And most likely, I would have benefited from their research in order to reach where I am today, number one. Number two, currently, at the same time, there are people working on that area as well. And they may, may be coming to different conclusions. Okay? And thirdly, I should be open enough to be able to say that, uh, you know, this, this is a, an opinion. This is an, uh, you know, viewpoint yeah. that I have come up with. Okay? But... It's not the only one, okay? This might be one of the reasons. This might be a viewpoint. This may be a reason. And it's not the only one, right? So that's number one. Number two is that we have to know our own limitations. Where can I have a viewpoint? And where can I not have a viewpoint? Okay, right? So when I go to, <coughs> when I'm sick and I go to the doctor, I don't start giving the doctor my viewpoints. You yeah. say, I don't care. I'm the doctor, and you've come here to seek treatment from me. So I'm going to give you the treatment which I think is the best treatment for your symptom, your uh, ailment at this moment in time. 
right? So we, I don't give her my viewpoint. Or if I go to a solicitor or to engineer or whatever, uh, you know, expert I've gone to. So this is one. So there's no point of me, who's not an expert, arguing with an expert. That's one. Number two is that even if you are a doctor, for example, mm -hmm. and you've gone to another doctor, you can ask him, yes, what's the evidence for um, what, you know, this, or what's the reasoning behind it? But you still have to respect that person's viewpoint because that person is still a scholar at the same time. Two. Number three, when it comes to religious matters, it's very, very important to be careful. Why? When it comes to religious matters, the authentic sources of religious matters are Holy Quran and Rawayat, established Sunnah of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and Al Bayt Al Salat Okay? And these are the sources which are uh, binding on the same on all, on all of us. Okay. Yes, on the same exact same um, topic that we're on right now. Um, another point is we find that a lot of youth now may become opinionated in more contemporary religious theories which are coming out. Um, some of these may be different to our core fundamental beliefs that we have um, been learning, worshipping our whole life, studying, and all of a sudden we get to university, we're with a good bunch of uh, Muslim lads, for example, or um, the opposite gender together, sisters, and um, they discuss, and everyone has their own opinions. But, for example, having scholars like one of them being Professor Mohsen Khaldivar and his theory on how um, they're very opinionated on infallibility, etc. We don't want to go into detail about that. Um, how do we make sure that the knowledge that we're gaining is actually the right one, the Sirat al-Mustaqeen, and keeping us on the light? And if we are... Uh, you know, to be honest, at university, being with the uh, different with people, similar, same belief, but different opinions, you can think quite different things, and everyone has their own say. Right. So I think I think what, this is one of the disadvantages that we have of social media today, is that everybody has an opinion, and everybody thinks that their opinion is equally valid. Mm -hmm. Yes, everyone's entitled to have an opinion. That's fine. But not every single person's opinion is equally valid, number one. Yeah, absolutely. Number two, just because somebody has an opinion doesn't mean it, it is true or false or, it, you know, it is it's something that I have to consider seriously as well. Especially in religious matters, okay? So if I've got an opinion about food, or if I've got an opinion about fashion, or if I've got an opinion about, you know, how to do something, that's mm -hmm. fine. You're entitled to have an opinion about it. I'm entitled to have an opinion about it. I think your shirt is very nice, for example. You, you. Uh, somebody else thinks it's not very nice. That's their own opinion, right? <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's not, a, you know, that's not a, a big deal. But when it comes to religious matters, when it comes to our beliefs and practices, we are not entitled to have opinions, right? Even people who have studied the religion are not entitled to have opinions. Mm -hmm. As far as, you know, fiqh is concerned, for example, people, sometimes they come to me and they ask me about a particular issue and they say, what's your opinion about this? I'm like, it doesn't matter what my opinion is about this, because my opinion doesn't matter. What, what matters is the opinion of fuqaha, of the mujtahids, of what the fuqaha say about this particular issue. Right? That's number one. And when it comes to matters of practice, or matters of fiqh, so prayers, fasting, hajj, zakat, khums, so on and so forth. When it comes to beliefs, yes. We have to believe according to our own evidences, right? So I can't follow another mujtahid when it comes to Tawheed, Adil Nubu'ah, Demand. I have to believe with my own evidences. However, that doesn't mean that I've got free license to believe in whatever opinion that I want to believe in and whatever uh, viewpoint that I want to take, yeah? And so, like I said, even if a scholar comes up with an opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Read about the opinion, okay? Just like keep an open mind. Yeah. Ju ju I mean, just like when you're at school, you read about opinions 
that you don't necessarily agree with. You learn about things, inshallah we're going to discuss that in a, little, in a moment. You learn about things that you don't necessarily agree with. Okay? Um, but you learn, you learn about them, that's fine. Okay? Similarly, if you come across opinions which are different to your own opinions, then learn. there's nothing wrong with learning about them. There's nothing wrong with knowing about it. There's nothing wrong with the person to know what this person believes. But you know what we find is people can take the knowledge and what they've heard from their friends and start actually, um, as you say, believing in what they're saying. Right. So how can we, what do we need to do to go back to ensure right. uh -huh. that what these so, people are... So like for example, so if we've got a scholar which comes, comes up with a different opinion... We're finding again, this every day now, yes, very contemporary. ...against our established beliefs, then we have to examine, right? And every believer, you don't have to be a scholar for this, every believer has to have the capability and the capacity to be able to do this. Okay, so we're not talking about the scholars, we're talking about average person. What? That if this person's gone against the beliefs of our established, you know, an established viewpoint for over, you know, 1200 years, mm -hmm. this person's come and he's challenged that viewpoint. That's fine. That doesn't necessarily mean that the viewpoint for 1200 years was correct and that viewpoint is definitely wrong. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it also doesn't mean that it's necessarily correct and the viewpoint of 1200 years of scholarship was wrong. Okay. But you know, youth, <laughs> right. what they do is so anything new which comes out, they'll grasp it. Just right. like a new iPhone. Right. So, so this is the point. That just because something is new doesn't mean we have to take it. And just because something is old doesn't mean we have to reject it. We live, like you said, we live in a disposable environment. We live in a disposable society. If anything stops working, you throw it away, you buy a new one. Even if it's a phone that you spent a hundred pound on. Yeah. If it stops working, you throw it away, you get a new one, right? <laughs> like before we used to say, oh, if something that's uh, of less value, mm -hmm. so you know, you, you, you have the, the big pens and if they run out, they stop working, you throw them away because you know that they're 50p. Right? But nowadays, even if something is that expensive, you still don't go and get it fixed. You just say, Let's, let me just go and buy a new one. Okay? But that's, this is not the way in religion. I cannot say that because this, is, this theory is too old, so it's expired, so it's not working for me, so I'm going to go and take an opinion from somebody else because I like it. No, I can't take opinions based on likes, dislikes, is this convenient for me, is this inconvenient for me, no. I have to see, first of all I have to find out, so this person's come up with a new opinion, okay? What's the evidence for this new opinion, right? Anybody can come up with a new opinion, anybody can have an opinion about anything, but that opinion is worthless if there's no evidence. Okay, so first of all, there has to be evidence. What's the evidence? We have evidence, so let's say, take this example, that this person says that Imams are not infallible. They're not ma'afoo. Okay, so here on this side, we've got all the scholars who have the evidence, or who are giving us the evidence about Imams being ma'afoo. Okay, so here we've got this person on this side. Maybe there's a few other people as well. I'm just using this person mm -hmm. as an example. We've got this person on this side who's saying Imams are not ma'afoo. Okay, so here these people have given us the evidence that they are muscle. What's this person's evidence that they are not muscle? Right? Or what's this person's issue with the evidence that these people have presented? Absolutely. Right? So we have to know that. We can't just say, okay, this person says Imams are not masum, so let's uh, take this opinion. No, what is the evidence that this is the case? Similarly with the old opinions. So we're not saying there's any difference with the old or new opinions. Any old opinion, new opinion, whichever opinion it might be, we have to have evidence for those opinions before we can say that this is the correct opinion or this is not. Okay? So we have to say this, this one has evidence, right? This is why we have scholars. This is why we have, uh, you know... We have to use our own logic and right. we have basically to we have do to our own research. We have to yeah. use our own mind. We have to do... Uh, why? Because I have to be answerable. This scholar, that scholar, that person, this person will not be answerable for me on the Day of Judgment. I will be answerable for my own beliefs. So if I say that I believed in this person's theory just because they came up with a new theory, God will say no. What is the evidence, doesn't matter who came up with this theory. What's the evidence for believing in this and what's the evidence for believing in this? 
Okay, so and if you got the evidence, and you bring the evidence, and you can convince yourself, forget anybody else, you convince yourself with the evidence of <coughs> of that, then it then then and only then would you be able to, you would we be able to say that yes. Uh, this is a theory that's worth considering and this is a theory that there's worth no consideration. Okay, moving on to the topic that we need to discuss um, <coughs> which is currently or going to be an issue next year um, what they're doing is they're making it compulsory to teach the, the UK law um, in our curriculums at school um, relationship and sex education. Um, kids as young as four will be um, able to study this What's, what, is, what is exactly the issue, say, there, and how um, can we work around to highlight I think, the I think the first issue is that um, up until now, um, sex education was obviously being taught in schools from age 11 onwards, uh, but parental consent was required. So if parents wanted to withdraw their children from those lessons, from those sessions, then they could. Okay. Um, however, now in 2019, a new law is coming and uh, it's going to be taught. And from 2020, it's going to be compulsory and there will be no parental consent required. So parents will not be able to withdraw their children from those lessons, if, even if they wanted to. That's one issue. The second issue is that obviously now instead of 11 years of age, it's gone to four years of age. So they're introducing these uh, these uh, things to children at that young age. Okay. They're given some reasons for why they're doing that. Okay. But, uh, and the government has kept the guidelines deliberately vague about that. And due to that, there are some external organizations which are lobbying schools and giving them free resources and pushing this in a particular direction. Okay, So those who want to find out more, and this is our responsibility of all of us to find out and to uh, try and combat this before we still have some time uh, before this comes into law and you know we could change, perhaps change their mind and you know regain that control back. So there's a website, it's called stoprse.com. It's got all the details, all the resources, everything on there. That, uh, all, everything basically that you need to know about this particular topic. And I think this is very important for everyone, but particularly for those who have uh, children in school at the moment, uh, because that is going to be something that they will have to uh, learn. And we have to protect ourselves and our families and our um, you know, upcoming generations from things which are uh, against our religion and our, you know, our culture and, and, and our, you know, our akhlaq and everything, okay? So we, we have to, um, we, we really have to, you know, combat this. We have to take it head on and take it seriously. And lots of guidelines. So stoprse.com is there, which has all the resources, and we uh, are working, you know, day and night to try and make sure that um, this particular. I think issue there's various polls coming out as yes. well, try to stop this from happening. Right. So, so the poll, the 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 poll is still open, even though it was discussed. They, they did have a very rushed discussion in Parliament about this particular point, and they just gave a standard reply. Um, but there is definitely um, backlash has happened here in Birmingham. Um, there's a protest outside of school in Birmingham where they were there, where this issue was being forced on the parents and the children. Um, but there's still a lot a lot more work that needs to be done, um, and we need to be armed with the facts. So we need to know what is happening, what is what what is the reality behind it. Um, what's the agenda behind it and how we can uh, prevent that without uh, falling foul of the law, doing something that will go against the law, which will put us in trouble, so on and so forth. We have to be very careful regarding that and uh, also protect ourselves and our families from um, this impending um, 
danger inshallah so if you go into stop rc.com you'll be able to see all the all the resources and all the stuff that needs to be uh, that you need to know and all the steps that you can take in order to help okay um before we finish the show off just to highlight now the benefits that we can get um from gaining knowledge and the importance of seeking it um, in our lives if there are some a few lines which you can say yes to I mean obviously the the benefits like we mentioned it may, the benefit is that you it will make you humble it will make you appreciate the Dean more it will make you appreciate and it's your right life. knowledge yeah yeah it will make you appreciate your your Dean your life your your life will become more fulfilled compared to a person who doesn't know, the person who knows, the person who is in the know, the person who stays up to date, that person's life is more fulfilling because they know and they want to know more, right? There's a hadith from Imam Ali that there's two types of people who they never get full up. One person who seeks knowledge and the other one who seeks wealth. As much as they get, they want to have more. Right? This is the effect. So if you seek knowledge, you want to seek more. And when you seek more, you will keep on wanting to seek more. And that will continuously improve yourself. And in order to seek more, in order to get more, we have a beautiful advice from Ayatollah Bahjit. Rahmatullahi. He was once asked that, how can we learn more and reach the high levels like yourself? So he used to say that, Act on what you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach you what you don't know. SubhanAllah. Right? So that's, this is very important. When it comes to knowledge in Islam, it's very important that I act in accordance with what I know, so that I can learn that which I don't know. And only that knowledge is beneficial or useful and good for me, and making me humble the one that I act in accordance with. Santa. Thank you so much, Sayyid. Um, just to conclude, we've mentioned key points. We've outlined the benefits today of education. We've looked at universities and how we can gain benefit from going to universities, but also gain knowledge from experience. So whether that be at the workplace and the training we do, we've given this Islamic perspective on how the Prophet himself started. And then we moved on to Imam Jafar al-Sadiq and his time, how he dealt with the people and how we today have a few contemporary theories which are coming out. How do we make sure that we're on the Sirat al-Mustaqeem? And we, we do all this by the knowledge that we gain. We look at it, we use our own logic, and we use the Holy Quran to see whether what we have been listening to is actually the same and from this the good actions that we do from our knowledge inshallah we can gain more and as Sayyid quoted Imam Ali the more the knowledge that you gain you want to gain it more and more so I hope everyone tunes in next week for another excellent for another show another topic I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Inshallah, see you next week. Khudafis.